Alright, I think it's going to be battery tray day today. And uh, yeah, let's see what we got. And if you look up from the top, although it's rusty, at first glance it doesn't look too bad. Until you start looking a little closer and you see that, uh, you know, that is a separate layer from uh, what's below it. And then when you look below, you can kind of see they just kind of leave. Looks like another pan over the top of that one. And uh, I mean, literally chopped it out of there with an ax and kind of went over it. So, there's a hole right there. I think I kind of like to improve upon that. So I did order uh, what we thought was going to be the right battery tray. And I'll show you the difference. Is pretty much that curve on the end. Now if you drop that in, there's a little slot that is supposed to grab the back wall. Bear with me. Good enough to get the idea. I'm gonna grab my light. And you can kind of see where it would normally fit, but then when it goes to tuck in the corner, you know, it's missing it by about three inches out in that one direction. So, yeah, it's kind of poking through there. There you go, now you can see it. So, this doesn't go to waste because the Westy Fish Bus out back needs one, and every bus needs one, to be honest with you. So I'm kind of thinking I'll just maybe go and try making my own. And I really don't care about that brace in the back where it locks onto the battery. I may just do what I did with Lucy and just kind of run two rods, threaded rods straight down with a bridge going over the top of it and then the hardware underneath. I think it makes for a you know, better product. And you can kind of go with any battery. You don't have to worry about kind of where you got the ones with the right bumps and stuff on them. And the locking hardware always kind of rusts up and there's... Anyway, we're going on and on. So the passenger side, or driver's side rather, is usually always stays in good shape because there's no acid getting dumped over it all the time. Although there's a gas can in the way. So I'm kind of thinking that maybe I can kind of use that for a cardboard template and see if we can go and fashion one by ourselves and uh, make our own. So that will be today's... Uh, project for Operation Double Trouble. So uh, let me get some cardboard out, get that gas can out of our way, and uh, start carving out some stuff. Alright, so I got a piece of my best Chinese cardboard kind of whittled into there. I, I took the original the pan that I, I bought and kind of laid it down and then uh, guesstimated on that far corner where that far corner would be and it kind of came out pretty good and tweaked it a little bit and then you can see where i put a black line going around i'm going to add i think a half inch to each of those areas and we'll make that the lip i can fold that lip going around so uh i'm probably gonna take that guy out of that side and just kind of give it a quick layover there and make sure it's okay that it's not like a you know, it's two inches wider, some goofy thing like that. Not that it really matters. And uh, make sure that uh, my pattern is correct. And then um, I'm going to get the plasma cutter out, probably my best bet. And we'll cut all that crap out of there and uh, clean up all the edges and see what we got to work with. I do know this bottom corner is Bondo. So as I weld to it, it's probably going to burn out anyway. And I'm not, you know, it's not exactly done with... Uh, the best of quality so it's uh, no great loss let's put it that way so uh, let me uh, test fit that over here real quick and uh, see what we get all right I'm gonna try to balance between being able to cut that out of there and trying to make it so that you guys can see I need to put some gloves on safety third you know so there's two layers there, so I don't know how, if the layers are really close together, it should cut through both of them. If not, I may have to cut through the top one first, yank that out of there, and then get the second one out. I can stick my hand right through the, the blinker hole. Let's see what we can get. Maybe that ground.
Shimoki. Let's uh, open the door. The heat out and the fresh air in. I think I stopped right there. Can get behind that bracket. Block a little. <laughs> I think I have a fast one all the way around. Nope, we're gonna have to go get ourselves a hammer. Again, it may have only cut through one layer too, so. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. Some of the parts are only cut through one. But I'm gonna get underneath it with a pry bar. I'm gonna yank that top skin out of there and uh, come back and we'll hit it again. Well, that was the first floor. I mean, you can see there's still the original ones down underneath here yet. So, uh, I'll probably do the same kind of thing where they cut the welds off, get the, I'll cut the center out first, then we'll clean up from there and answer the phone. And basically came out in little slivers. What I've taken out so far has come out in little slivers. And uh, the thing is, that I'm trying to, you know, not destroy what I need to weld to, but they kind of you know, mangled their way on there with um, different welds. Uh, lost you. You know, you can kind of see that glob of a weld right there. And that kind of goes all around on the first level, and then the lower level should have spot welds all around it. So what I think I'm going to do, as far as the bottom's concerned, I'm not going to be that concerned with removing every last little bit of the lip. I think I may just leave that lip behind on the lower section, and uh, I'm going to grind it flat to the wall. Of course, cut the rest of that crap out, cut the stuff off that's on top. And I'll have the lip go upward where I think it went downward before so I can bend up whatever I want to bend up. But I want to get rid of all that trash on top and then we're going to kind of clean it up so it's not so uh, janky. We we'll use that as the word of the month. We'll stick with that. And uh, clean back to something I can work with. Problem is it's a little hard to get cutting wheels and stuff in there on the corners. So I'm going to get the little one in there. We'll start buzzing across that top strip and Work on that top layer first. I'll get that on my way and then maybe we can kind of get a flapper disc in there for the, uh, the lower section there, you know. Yeesh. Hey, judging by the dirt that's on the floor, that was thoroughly a pain in the ass. But uh, got it pretty much cleaned up. Uh, you know, where the top pan was welded on, you can see it's shiny right there. That's all been removed and kind of ground down where the welds are. And I, again, I just kind of left the lower lip alone and just kind of ground it flush to the wall. I figure I'm gonna do more damage than good if I try removing any of that and besides right there is a seam for that lower piece is a seam. So I think I'll use that as my guide to how far down I like drop the pan and instead of having the lip bend down I'm gonna have the lip bend up all the way around. You can see where that bondo is kind of shooting through right there. That's where there's a side uh, marker light supposed to be attached there and then there's another one down there. That's where a bracket for a, a, a bumper shield. There's a shield that goes between the, the bumper and the, uh, the body. And that would be the mounting hole for that too. So I'm gonna open them back up with a drill while I can kind of get in there. You can see the, the pile of weld that's in there. And again, I just kind of 
and ground it flat. I don't want to take too much of that away from there because that's actually the frame rail coming back. So there's a difference between being pretty and being strong. And uh, that one wins out because no one's ever going to see it anyway. Except for, me, except for you guys watching me make this video, right? So I think I'm going to start making the pan. Where's the old black one? The new old black one. What do I do with it? Oh, it's sitting on my cart. So what the factory setup was, they bent the lip down all the way around and then on that um, side where it meets the rail, they had bent it up. So again, I'm gonna bend it up all the way around and uh, see how that works out. And then on this corner, I think what I'm gonna try and do is just bend right to the corner, bend right to the corner and um, maybe work the, the lip by hand around. We'll see how that makes out. So that's the next thing. I'm going to go leave my pattern in there, make sure it looks okay before I start the cutting and we're going to start making this a replacement patch panel. And a little after. Here's the pattern. I'm going to give this the, the rough idea. And uh, I ended up going with 16 gauge. The original uh, pan would have uh, uh, recesses built into it to help give it structure. And um, I don't have, uh, I could do it, but I don't feel like doing it. And um, because of the battery acid and everything, I figure it will hold up much longer if we make it out of thicker material. And uh, it should just be better all the way around. Other than fitting, because it makes it a little harder to fit. Anyway, I was able to bend this side up and this lip up in the bender. And then the other two, I just had to kind of stick over the edge here and kind of hammer into submission and to make, make it. But uh, they're going to get a little beat up anyway when I go to go fit it. I know I am. But uh, that should do it. That's uh, definitely uh, got some schnot to it. The only thing I have to still go back and do is cut the slot in for the, um, the seam that goes on the outside wall. I'm going to cut a... We'll, we'll start with a small one, see how it works out, and then and you know, I'm going to have to shift it left or right. Uh, anything else? Yeah, I just kind of rolled the corner. Guesstimated where it should be and uh, did a bunch of pie cuts in there and just kind of hammered them around. And, I kind of figure we can get it in there and then you can kind of tap the wall back into place uh, afterwards to kind of give it a form fit. And I probably will, I don't, I'm not sure yet, but uh, I, I may probably just kind of drill a bunch of holes in it and uh, maybe we can see if we can plug weld around it. But uh, let's see how it fits first before we get into that. Okay, so I got that kind of sort of tapped into place, our first rough kind of fit. And it's a press fit in there, which is... Uh, Good, I guess. Better than having a big open gap. And back seam looks good. That wall looks good. Let's see if I can do this. Well, that area kind of looks, the curve looks good. The only place where it seems to look like it's screwed up is this front lip can kind of seem like it climbs uphill. So I take a look underneath. And you can see that I'm pretty much tapping into where the other pan was. I'm like, well, that doesn't make any sense. Then I looked at the replacement pan. You guys can see it already you see that little offset that they, they put in it right there so I have to create that that would explain why that corner sitting up and I figure while I'm here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run around and hit with a magic marker a bunch of spots where we're gonna pre-drill the hole so I could do that plug welding like I talked about and uh, let's see how that goes yes no maybe so the only thing that kind of sucks is that you're trying to weld 16 to 20. You kind of want the other way around, but uh, what are you going to do? That's to make seam sealer for, right? All right? Let me pop that sucker back out of there and uh, make some minor alterations, and we'll try it again. And as we wrap up another evening, yeah, that would guess it would be the before. And uh, got our paint all kind of tapped in there. I don't even know where to film from. And that's our after. Again, like I drilled the perimeter and. I put the pan in and kind of, I didn't use the um, the holes to kind of go and tack them. You can see that there's a, a blob of tack on the top of the metal there. So I kind of tapped it into place, looked underneath it, said, okay, that's good. It was kind of springy when it popped, it wants to pop out of the hole. So I just kind of went around, stuck another one, yeah, right there and so on. Kind of got it all on the same level, level playing field. 
and then I kind of ran around and, with a hammer and tapped the flange back to meet the other metal uh, and then fit, plug welded it. And it looks nice. It looks nicer on top than it does on the bottom. But uh, we'll say it, let's say it looks better than it did. And then underneath, let's uh, let me lay on the floor and look upward. All right. So you can kind of see where I got to sitting and meet the old seam. And uh, looks good all the way around, except for it seems like it's a little far away, or I should have ground that bit of that flange away right there, but that's all right. That's what seam seal is for, right? You see, I'm a little tall right there. But again, if I was perfect, you'd have to pay me more, right? Oh, it popped up a little bit, but that's alright. Now, uh... Let me get back up. Let's try to get back up. The outside, um... Bond, though, you can see where it's... It's cracking away. And, yeah, because I, I welded underneath that and beat on it, so it's got... You know... Cracks and stuff in it. Are you still zoomed in? Yeah. Here you go. So you can see it's kind of lumpy and bumpy and stuff. But I'm going to dig all that out anyway because I have a feeling nothing else was done right. So why should that be done right, right? And while I was in there, I heard one of you guys remind me to uh, drill those holes out for the, uh, for the bumper and the, uh, the reflector. So when I get to working on the skin on the outside, we'll deal more with that kind of stuff. As far as metal work, I think um, I'm getting pretty close. There's a little bit of punkiness kind of going on down here. Let's see where they added a panel. You can see where they, they drilled the hole for a spot weld and there's nothing there. So I'll probably wire wheel that down. Take a look, make sure we got a good kind of connection right here. And if not, we'll fix whatever's kind of missing on that corner. I'm just concerned. You know, if this is a separate panel right here, how this is attached to this, I just want to make sure they're welded and it's just not filled. Well, fortunately, there's so many lines over here between the brake and the door and everything. This area doesn't quite show as much. I've got a bunch of bond doing it over the, this panel install. And again, I got to do the same thing on this side as far as um, digging out the pondo and welding a, a piece of a uh, eighth inch going back down to kind of recreate that seam that's supposed to be there. But I seem to remember from the inside that um, it didn't look too bad, you know. But see the aftermath of uh, the, the stud gun. There's the, uh, the back side of uh, heating all those, little, all those little pieces up and yanking and pulling and tugging on that piece over there. So, so again, getting pretty uh, close to, uh, I think, uh, metal issues being resolved. Poking the door a little bit, we'll make sure that we're, we're good on this door. But I'm thinking that's it. This door is all metal, so whatever I see is what I got. And I may uh, do some touch up on this panel a little bit more. Me try playing with, trying to get a little bit of the swollen, the swollen lumps out of it up high, down bottom. I know it's going to be a bunch of bonda, but I like I like to try to cure it a little bit higher up here, so I don't have to come up as high. But we'll see. All right, guys. Again, another uh, ending, another episode of the Misty Wind Show. And uh, hopefully we'll have this thing uh, done this year. No oil prices are coming way down, but that's kind of getting ridiculous, huh? They're actually just giving it away. Guess I should get filled up. A bargain, I tell you. <laughs>